Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, my name is Lisa Scott, and I'm one of the academic advisors here at St. Ben's and St. John's, and I work specifically with international students. And so probably in the first week of my job here, it led me to Dr. Bennett's right away, and I've worked very closely with him ever since. Um, in Japan, there is a tradition that retiring faculty members give what's called their last lecture. Um, administrators and colleagues, other faculty members and students, past students and current students gather to hear the words of wisdom from their distinguished uh, faculty member. Um, just last December, I was so honored and privileged to be at Bunkyo Gakuen University in Tokyo with my colleague Mallory Smith from the Global Center um, to witness Dave's last lecture. Uh, I'm so glad to see the room so full today so we can enjoy um, Dave's words again here at St. Benjamin St. John's as he gracefully exits. Um, he led six, I didn't realize this until today, six J-term programs to Bunkyo, three semester-long programs, and for six summers he spent time in Tokyo as a visiting um, scholar and faculty member there, which I learned today, Dave, I didn't realize. <coughs> It is my uh, a special pleasure, Dave, to introduce you, my colleague, my friend, my mentor, my fellow Michigander, my dear sensei. And as they would, and I, I must tell you all, he is truly a rock star in, in, at Bunkyo in the halls. People know him and greet him, and it's really quite a pleasure to be walking with him. And they call him, and I quote here, distinguished foreign faculty member, Dr. David P. Bennett. And I, I should note that Lisa and Mallory did not come to Tokyo to hear my last lecture. <laughs> they, were there, uh, they were there doing a lot of very important work, a few pieces of which I, I might mention uh, today. But thank you for the introduction. And while I'm at it, this is as good a time as any to, to thank Lisa and so many, many other people sitting here today for all of their contributions to global education generally and in many, many cases very specifically to the CSB, SJU, BGU and related uh, programs. It uh, takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to keep and sustain a, a good program going and making it, making it better. And as I said, there's a lot of people in this room uh, who've been important players in, in all of that. Um, my, my Bunkyo friends, and from time to time people here as well, uh, frequently ask me, including students by the way, how I got involved in all of this, the early stages of this CSB, SJU, BGU community, and then how, second question is often, how have I and why have I uh, remained involved as long as I, as long as I have? Actually about, remained involved about 24 years longer than I originally intended to, <laughs> to be honest about it. Um, and so when I gave the Tokyo presentation, which they call the the last lecture. Prior to that, I had been sort of thinking about ultimately trying to answer that question a little bit for them, because I never had a very good answer to it. How did I get involved? Why did they get involved? What was it like over all these years? So on. And to try to address it in a way that was appropriately modest, because sometimes, especially my friends at, at Bunkyo think, I did all of this, <laughs> you know, I sustained all of this, which is far from true. And anyway, I, I thought I, I eventually decided I would begin with a very, very famous, nationally known haiku poem. Looking back on it, you know, one of the things we, we usually learn when we're in a foreign country is, you know, don't do anything that 
touches so so close to home with them that you might you might screw it up and embarrass yourself. But anyway, I thought I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to explain some things with that with that haiku poem. Um, I only regretted or thought later that maybe I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, and this is really a very very well known haiku poem it has multiple kinds of translations and interpretations to it, even though like all haiku poems, it's very brief and simple. And here's, here's the one I used. An old pond, a frog leaps, the sound of water. That's it. An old pond, you know this, an old pond, a frog leaps, the sound of water. And I told them that as I saw it, I was the frog in that poem. All I did 25 years ago, which is how long this relationship's been going on, all I did 25 years ago was jump rather unknowingly, intuitively, instinctively, ignorantly maybe, I jumped into the pond. I had no, no idea course, the kind of ripples that that naive frog <laughs> uh, would make when I jumped into that pond 25 years ago. I've since then jumped into that pond many, many more times, a little bit more aware of what those ripples might look like than I was that first time. Sometimes I jumped in and there were no ripples. <laughs> every successful program, we don't talk much about them, but every successful program has some, some flops, right? But I, I jumped in many, many more times. And of course, very early on in all of this, a lot of other people here and that Bunkyo, ultimately in Okinawa, a lot of other people also jumped into that. To that pond. I think, I think maybe I just <clears throat> like to release to a frog. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of frogs in this room, and there are a lot of frogs right now, and have been over the years in Tokyo at Bunkyo University. People who, as the program progressed, diversified, I, I think became enriched who jumped into that, that pond. And without their taking that leap, nothing of what became the CSB-SJU relationship would, of course, ever have come to fruition in any, any kind of way. So it's been a team effort, no question. And I, over the years, I have develop a kind of impatience with people who almost regularly say, we can't do that, we shouldn't do this, this will be too difficult, the program's okay anyway. I'm, I'm much more of a, ah, oh, what the heck, jump in the pond. You know? <laughs> Probably not going to drown. And some, sometimes the ripples will be really nice ones. For our students primarily, but, but for all of us. Um, for 40 plus years I've been, and this is true of a lot of you here, for 40 plus years I've been telling my students, whether you're doing an essay, a lengthy research paper, an oral presentation, you got to have a thesis. You need a thesis. You have to tell your audience something at least of what it is you would like to, to argue. Uh, so I guess I have to I have to have a thesis, I guess, right? Uh, I also tell my students you need focus. I don't have that today, I don't think. <laughs> focus for, 20, for a 25 year engagement is hard, but I, but I do have a thesis, which I'm gonna try eventually then to sort of argue as an appropriate thesis for talking about CSB, SJU, EGU, and our stepchild in many ways Okinawa relationship, relationships. 
thesis is, the overriding goal for all university global education efforts should be the creating, or at least the molding, of engaged and committed global citizens. That, it seems to me, is the reason why we're here at St. Ben's and St. John's doing all of the many things we do, right? In classrooms, with on-campus clubs and programs, with study abroad, certainly. We're trying to begin, make a contribution to the molding of engaged and continuing global citizens, okay? The rest of my thesis then is, if you buy what I just said, the CSB-SJU Bunkyo Partnership has made significant contributions to the molding of true global citizens, not just visitors here and there, true global citizens on both sides of the Pacific, at least to say here and in Japan. And in a variety of ways, which I hope to demonstrate, uh, in a variety of ways, this program has done so in unique and lasting ways. Unique and lasting ways. Our colleagues at BGU, that's, that's my thesis, okay? <laughs> my colleagues, your colleagues at BGU, and they've said this so many times, consider CSB SJU global education effort to be a model for them. Almost everything they, they do in terms of global education, they, one of the first things they do is sort of ask themselves, what do St. Ben's and St. John's do in these various areas, right? Whether it's classrooms or study abroad program, whatever. And certainly regarding study abroad, our partnership with them, as they look to developing international partners, they consider the CSB, SJU, BGU partnership, collaborative effort to be a model. It's how they want to build, and they've been doing a lot of building here, it's how they want to build their partnerships based on the relationship they have with us. And I think that's flattering. Um, I think it's why they asked me when I did my last lecture there if I would talk about what I talked about, the history of and the nature of the BGU, CSB, SGU relationship. I think it's also true, I, others can testify whether to the same extent, that here we also consider in some ways our collaborative relationship with BGU as being a model for other things that we do and for things that we would like to see happen in study abroad for the true exchange nature of it and so on. So I, I think it's a kind of a shared Shared belief, if you will. There are a couple of ways of, and, and I said earlier that I want to sort of argue that there is a uniqueness and there is a, a, a flavor worth emulating and trying to duplicate in this relationship. Um, and so that's what I want to address today. And I think there are a couple of ways of demonstrating the, the nature of, viability of, global efforts. And we all know a lot of stuff happens here in classrooms, it happens in clubs, it happens at the cultural festivals and so on. A number of ways in which, and if, if you don't know all these ways, you can read this, the Simon article in the, our application for that prestigious Global Education Award. And, and one of the ways that legitimately we measure our success, anybody's success in global education, is by identifying and naming 
the programs, right? Noting how many people are touched by these programs. Students, faculty, administrators, and even people in the, in our case, the greater Collegeville St. Joe area. It's hard to talk about the greater Tokyo area, it's greater in and of itself, but even beyond our beyond our walls, right? And that's that's one of the easiest things to do, but it's important, right? To simply say, okay, here are the things we do. And here's how long we have been doing them. And here's how many people, as best we can tell, have been significantly touched by those programs. The handout, and I hope, I hope you all have the handout, was sort of my, a day ago, my, my effort to kind of do that, to sort of give you a, a listing, it's not complete, of the, the nature of, the multifaceted nature of our Bunkyo relationship. And how many people over 25 years, a lot of them very, very significantly, have been touched by that collaborative effort, okay? And I mentioned to some people that when I use handouts in class, it's usually because I don't want to spend too much time on <laughs> what's on them, and that's, that's the case here as well. But I sort of list the, the different aspects of this relationship, when they became part of it, right? How many people were, were touched by it? And again, I don't intend to spend much time here. Right? You can read, right? You can all read through this, but it's a 25-year-old program now. Uh, 1989, for some reason, I agreed to direct a summer, that time was four weeks, a summer four-week ESL program, an American Culture Studies program. And I agreed saying, oh, yeah, I'll do this for one year, and then someone you know, maybe more interested in this sort of thing, or someone trained in Japanese studies, or something will take over and do it. Well, that was 25 years ago, and I've been doing it ever since. Um, it started with what's called the BSIS program. Was, originally, it was in the summer. It took place in late July and August. Bunkyo Summer Intensive Study. That's the program I agreed to put together for for Bunkyo here at St. John's and St. Ben's. They, come, they came in the summer for a four-week program, ESL study, American culture studies, and so on. More than, and I think significantly more, I just didn't try to do all the addition, but more than a thousand, that's right, more than a thousand Bunkyo students have taken part in that BSIS program since it began almost 25 years ago, including some people here with us today who took part in that program. Um, 24 St. Ben St. John's professors have taught in that program. Nothing like adding summer employment for colleagues into the mix, right? 100 CSPSJ students have served as counselors in that program, including, again, who are here today. And not often thought about, I guess, dozens, I, many dozens, I think, of central Minnesota families have served, have volunteered as homestay families for that program. And for a lot of them, that was their sort of first, that was their first global effort in many ways. This is central Minnesota effort. And a lot of those families, very nervous at first, I'm sure if they should do this because they didn't have any international contacts or experiences until they did those homestay programs. And then many of them continued on to do five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. Okay. So I think it was interesting in that regard. Um, we've since, and I'll, I'll mention that very briefly later, we've since changed that BSIS, Bukio Summer Intensive Study Program, 
to the Bunkyo Spring Intensive Study Program. We didn't even have to change the, the BSI part, unfortunately. Uh, one of the things that, you know, if you have a chance to look through this list, and I'll mention a few of them, one of the things that I would like to argue, when you simply look at the history and structure and the, and the many pieces of a collaborative relationship, I'd like to argue that they, they are, at least they certainly should be organic and not static. Right? Organic and not static. If, if there are programs that after five or six years have been running smoothly, you know, really nice programs, like I think almost all of everything we do globally here, we can say nice programs, nice opportunities. But I think every so often, instead of simply being kind of satisfied with how nice those programs are, we ought to sit back and say, well, okay, they're really, really good. <clears throat> Can they be better? Can we make sure that they are growing all the time? And for, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but for about 20 years of that 25-year relationship, everybody was really happy with BSIS, right? Japanese friends were happy with it, we were happy with it. We simply, with some little tweaking, we kind of did what we've been doing successfully, I think, over and over again. And then one, one summer when I was teaching at, at Bunkyo, sitting down with coffee for some of my colleagues there, and sort of talking again about, you know, the specifics of the next BSIS program, almost, I, I don't know, almost unanimous, collectively, I guess, we said, the three or four of us who were there, let's put aside, you know, the putting together of the next BSIS program, let's set that aside for a moment, and let's ask ourselves, this is after 20 years, right? Let's ask ourselves if it could be better. And that was the meeting at which we decided, another jump in the pond, right? We decided, let's try March. Let's, instead of having those students here in August, late July and August, and these are nice places in July and August, no question. But there's no Johnnies or Bennies here in July and August. There's no classes, there's no activities, club reasons, none of that's happening. Right? And these are, after all, university college students. So, you know, the, the lake is nice, and the soccer field is nice, and walking around is nice, but it's not an American university experience. So we decided to do it in March. And I think that was a brilliant decision on our part. Uh, Bunkyo Spring Intensive Study is a so much better, more enriching, more energizing, short-term program than Bunkyo Summer for all of its virtues in your summer intensive study was. And just an example of how to run through this list, you see that there are various points at which, you know, we said, everything's going well, this is good, and could have said, I suppose, let's just stop here and, you know, it's a little bit easier to just keep doing what we know we've done pretty well. But instead, made some big changes in our relationship. Um, at some point early on in this, in the Bunkyo summer intensive study, I thought, well, this is really a lot of fun, doing, having these Japanese students here and you know, helping them understand American culture, helping them with their English. I should get St. John's and St. Ben's students <laughs> over there. I don't know why I did that either. Maybe I was just thinking, then I can go. <laughs> but, so I started doing January term. We have January 
term then, I started doing January term courses in Japan with, once again, the gracious help and assistance of our partner, which is then Bunkyo Junior College for Women, two-year college for women. And they hosted our January term. And then when it became clear to me that, and the Bunkyo folks knew this, that January term was going to go, the writing was on the wall, uh, that's when I started thinking about a full semester program there. And again, talk to people at Bunkyo who were excited about this possibility and so on. We couldn't have a January term unless have a full semester program there for Johnny's and Benny's. And we, in discussing this, we made what I think was one of, again, a, a really important decision regarding this program. We need, if we're going to do, put together a full semester program at Bokyo for St. John's and St. Ben students, we needed a full semester opportunity here for Bokyo students. <laughs> Had to be a two-way street. And that's the way the program was, was put together. Johnny's and Benny's going to Punkyo, Punkyo students coming here. DSIS is still going on, but this is a new piece to it, right? Punkyo students coming here for the full semester. A few years later, we said, why only a full semester? Let's make it a full year possibility. And so we amended that agreement so that a full year as possible. So there are three students sitting here today who opted for the, and is a fourth not here, probably practicing a vocal somewhere, uh, who opted for the full year. There were three others who came, only stayed one semester, seven total. And, and again, I think that, that the two pieces of this making sure that it was an exchange has made over the years the Bunkyo program unique in wonderfully enriching ways and in ways that really have helped create global citizens. Our ultimate goal, it seems to me. So there are different points here at which we made sure we didn't simply sit back and say, well, you know, things have been going pretty well, let's, let's not mess too much of a, of a good thing. We tried other changes that didn't work. I'm not going to talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work. So. And we still have some things we'd like to, to nurture and change. Okay, well, we, we can go on. Like I say, you can, you can look how this thing the BSIS program then led to January term programs, led to the full semester and then full year exchange program, led ultimately to a May term program, us sending our students to Mokyo in May to, to match up with BSIS, right? Short term exchange, and again, a real exchange. <coughs> At some point in all of this, uh, Bunkyo decided they would like to hire two of our graduates every year to work in their international programs office, it's now called the Global Studies Institute, to work in that office at Bunkyo to tutor Bunkyo students and to become RAs in the International Student Residence Hall at Bunkyo, where our exchange students live, right? And they've been doing that now for, I think, something like a dozen or so CSPSU graduates have worked for a year at <coughs> Bunkyo at Wayne University. When all of these things are happening, um, Bunkyo is undergoing a real transformation. When I first started dealing with them, they were Bunkyo Women's Junior College, two-year program. All of those early BSIS students were two-year students. They then moved from that to a four-year women's college, 
to a four-year women's university to, what, five or six years ago, a four-year co-educational university. A lot, and became very much, much more global focused themselves. In fact, a lot of the students at Bunkyo, in recent years at least, and I ask a lot of them, you know, why are you at Bunkyo? And there's a lot of answers. Um, maybe the, but one of the big answers they say is that I know that at Bunkyo I have a chance to study abroad and not just for three weeks but for a semester or a year if I want to. They've built the, beginning to build a reputation. Like I think we had as a, a global education place, a place that tries to mold global citizens. And they've changed a lot over the years in, in that regard. Oh, by the way, the other important reason for going to Bunkyo is where the subway stop is. <laughs> right outside the entrance to Bunkyo University, right? And students will say, well, gee, I really like the fact that I can get on the Nambuco line and I can get off at Todai Station, and there I am, I'm on campus. Right? Well, that's, that's a reality of life. Anyway, I don't know that I want to. Oh, one, the only other thing I want to mention here, I think, two other things, maybe, quickly, if I, if I might. Um, the, our Okinawa partnerships were really stepchildren, offshoot of our Bunkyo relationship, our Bunkyo partnership, in a lot of ways. Because when, thanks to a brief comment, really, by Father Neil Lawrence, if you don't know anything about Father Neil Lawrence, you will need someone else to give you a long lecture in that regard. But uh, school in Okinawa, Okisho, Shikaku, Okinawa, was looking for a place to have a summer ESL program for their junior and senior high school students. And they sent a group to visit with us here. And the fact that we had, by that time, a 12 to 15 year relationship with Bunkyo, we could simply lay out to them, okay, here's, here's what we've been doing and doing pretty successfully for, for Bunkyo. We could put together a program for your students as well. And the result of those discussions was that Okisho decided to have a summer program here. That was, this was like 15, almost 15 years ago, I think. And that program, was not static either. Okisho began to hire graduates of St. Ben's, St. John's. Four people are going there next year, graduates of the class, this year's senior class will be teaching at Okinawa next year. And then they became a major recruiting ground for St. Ben's and St. John's, <coughs> that high school in Okinawa. So then, recent years, with a few exceptions, all of the St. Ben's, St. John's, Japanese students, four-year degree-seeking students, are from that Okinawa High School, with a few exceptions, or from another Okinawa High School. So that's been a, and all of that is sort of modeled after, in a kind of way, the Bunkyo example of the program. And then finally, very quickly, when Lisa and Mallory were in Tokyo last December, December uh, the sort of the culmination of some discussions over a period of years with Bunkyo High School resulted in the signing of a, an agreement that we certainly hope and it looks likely will bring Bunkyo High School students to the St. John St. Ben's campuses for a summer ESL program, patterned after the Oki Show program. And hopefully, it will result in our being able to recruit some of the very fine students at Bunkyo High School. Organic, growing, expanding, reaching out in a lot of ways. Okay, that's, you can, you can read the rest of this site, I think. Um, Anyway, the numbers are impressive, you know, the thousands of students, the dozens of faculty members, the 
many dozens of local families, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that have been brought in different stages, different parts of, of this program over a long, long period. And the evidence is pretty clear that many, many of those students here and there have been really changed by being involved in these things. And not changed for the moment, not changed for the moment, but changed I have evidence now, some of them, for at least 20 years, because I still see them. For those who are here now, I would also predict, not changed just by a year here, but really changed forever. And that's a huge step in the direction of becoming a global citizen, not just a, a visitor, not someone who kind of drops in and meets people and sees things goes back to the life they had before and are changed certainly, but maybe not, maybe not enough. Okay. The enough of the history and stuff. I think it's important, but it's not very exciting. Um, I, I'd like to, in the little time I have I have left here to to talk about a different part, a, a different kind of Argument for my my thesis, something about the uniqueness of the Bunkyo St. Ben St. John's relationship, uh, and that has to do with what is connected. This a word? Is connected? This a real word or did I? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's good. Okay. Um, what I sort of label connectedness and longevity. The connectedness piece has to do with the connectedness, not only of people like me and Lisa and Sarah and others, Phil, to, to Bunkyo, but the connectedness of the students, the students who have been part of this, this collaborative effort. And I'll try to say, say something about what I mean about that. It just mean, it, it means essentially that they really get to know the host students of the other of the other country, and not just hi, not just a program here and there, but on a daily kind of basis, eating together, studying together, playing together, crying together sometimes, right? And that there's this the program allows wonderful opportunity to establish real friendships. The longevity piece has to do with, again, and, and I know this, at least I know it for 25 years, for a 25 year period, these are not sort of short term snapshot friendships. They are long term international global friendships. And I think you can't really be global citizen, unless you've got some of those. And certainly the Bunkyo program has created a lot of them. So I'm going to, picture's worth a thousand words, and I'm going to show you some photographs, make some brief comments of them to try to illustrate for you what I mean by connectedness on both sides of the Pacific and longevity. And I, I can't give you all the examples of this, but I'm going to give you a few, right? Um, this, this is just the beginning in a way, right? Uh, when I decided having hosted and directed programs for Bukio students, it was time to get our students there. First thing I did was I went there uh, to Bukio University. And eventually my family went there on occasion with me. And some of you know, you may not recognize this person, but that, <laughs> that's me. Uh, my wife, the Bunkyo students will certainly recognize Akiko Shimada for most of the 25 years of this program. Uh, the president of Bunkyo University, she's not now, she's still the director of their board, so very much a player. Uh, her son, who is now a professor in, the, in their business college, 
and very likely the next is a, a new president there now whose name is Wabe, but very likely my money's on <laughs> Shimada becoming the next president at some point when he tires of being a professor in the business college. Uh, that's him. And Mickey Shimada, who's now the inter, sort of the international programs director at Tokyo High School. Akiko Shimada's daughter. And she's the person that Lisa Mallory and I have worked with and met with to sign off on that recent agreement. And I'm reminded of how long this has been going on. Um, she's a senior in college. She's a first year college student. Their youngest daughter isn't in the picture because she wasn't born yet. But she's, I think, a junior or maybe even beginning her senior, senior year in high school. And, well, these are my, she's, St. Ben's graduate, 27 years old, and a nurse at St. Paul Hospital right now. So anyway, this, this was kind of the first integration, first collaboration ever. Um, a lot of you know her. She is, without a doubt, one of the most remarkable women I have ever, ever known. Um, and she was a really early and persistent frog in this story. I mean, there was nothing that ever came up as something worth trying that she didn't say, let's do it. When I was trying to put together the semester program, I needed housing. Where in Tokyo do you find housing for students who are going to be there for four months? And it was like, oh, it was going to wreck my plan, right? And Akiko Shimada called me into her office one day. We talked about this. She said, I'm going to build you a dorm. Okay, <laughs> that was the end of that problem. Right? <laughs> They're about to begin to build a second dorm for international students. So she's, I shouldn't say a big frog, but an active frog. <laughs> okay, this is a. Uh, this is the group that I led to Japan last year, the, the last year's study abroad group. And some of you know one of the earliest little excursions taken by that group is a kind of retreat to a bunkyo property. They call it a seminar house. I don't know why. It's like a little hotel in the foothills of the Japanese cells, close to an active volcano. But this is my, the group that I brought to uh, to Japan last year uh, at that Kurizawa retreat and you probably can't see it all that all that well from here but there are in this picture 39 students I think anyway don't count them I might be off by one or two. 39 students at this two night three day retreat to Kurizawa 14 of the students in this picture are St. Ben's St. John students. One, two, three of them at least are here today. 14 of them are St. Ben's St. John students. Six of them, actually seven of them, are other international students. Two from Malaysia, two from Bulgaria, one from Turkey, and one from Nepal, who live in the dorm with our exchange students, and then one one student from China who's a, didn't live in the dorm with us, but she's a student at, at Tokyo. So 14 of our students, I think seven international students, and something like 18 Tokyo students on our excursion, right, on our retreat. But that's the purpose of it, right? Early on, we spend this time together away from campus at this wonderful place sometimes renewing friendships, because a lot of these Bunkyo students in this picture were BSIS students previously and or exchange students. Right. So a lot, of, you know, a lot of our students had already met some of those Bunkyo students, but there's new ones too. Right. So the beginnings, or sometimes the continuation of that close friendship 
with people who will continue in many cases to be friends begins at that that cruise out of experience. Uh, what do I want to say about this? And I, I think I have most of this right. This young woman is a St. Ben student. Is she still around or did she graduate? Do you know? She's still here. She's still here. Okay. Her name is Megan, right? Yeah. And Megan was a friend of a Bunkyo student who had studied at. Bunkyo. Sandy. Sandy, right? And she was going to Japan. And so as I, as I was told the story at least, she contacted some Bunkyo students that a friend of hers, and Megan hadn't studied there. As far as I know, she had virtually nothing to do with any of these Bunkyo pieces up at this point. But a friend of hers was coming to Tokyo, and maybe if a few Bunkyo students had some time, they could welcome her, right? <laughs> Well, this is just one of the ways in which the St. Ben student, alone and new to Japan, was welcomed by the Bunkyo students. It's a pizza party in the chat room, right? Yes. But I've seen other photographs of Megan's experience out in the town with two, three, four Bunkyo students being taken to dinner, being blah, 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 right? doing karaoke, as I recall, <laughs> because a St. Ben student said, will you do whatever little you might be able to do for this friend of mine who's going to stop by. Um, the other thing that's worth noting about this when I'm talking about connectedness and so on, is that in this picture, a little welcoming or a little party for this blonde, blue-eyed Benny. <laughs> In this picture, there are Bunkyo exchange students, that is to say, students who've been here semester or year, past, on this time, at this occasion, past and future. Some who had already done that, some like these folks who were going to be doing it. There are BSIS students, students who came here for that three-week program, some who then came back, but some not, in this picture, joined in this welcoming. And then, CSB Okinawa. CSB Okinawa. In Tokyo, with Tokyo students, welcoming this, this Benny who showed up and needed some, some help and guidance global community, sort of connectedness and involvement. Every year, when I, every time when I go there, I have at least one evening set aside for Okinawans in Tokyo. Okinawans who have graduated from here, who live in Tokyo now. And it's, it's not unusual for me to go to that alumni reunion and to have people there who came from Okinawa to Tokyo to, to be there. Happens all the all the time, so it's it's really a mixed mixed group. Um, this is in the chat lounge again. It's a sort of what I kind of call a kind of initial sort of encounter of our students at at Bunkyo. I think a future exchange student, past BSIS. Again, somehow an Okinawan got in on this. <laughs> uh, past BSIS student. And at the time, a future exchange student, because she's here now. And this was before she became part of the exchange program. I think you get the picture, right? That there's all of this kind of meeting up and discussing and sharing and everything that goes on just sort of regularly on the Bukyo campus. Reminding you of the student in the future exchange student, Okinawan Benny, who was in Tokyo at the time, right? In the Bunkyo chat lounge, reconnecting. So 
Bunkyo Exchange student who has performed, marvelous singer who's performed frequently during her exchange year here on campus, and Okinawa student who almost immediately became her accompanist in that enterprise, and they've been pretty inseparable ever since, right? That friendship begun in the Tokyo chat lounge carried over, and it's, it's not going to end <coughs> when they part ways. It's not going to end. Their, their friendship, I think, is solid. Global. This is my little piece of glo the globalness of what this relationship has, has led to. Uh, Bunkyo exchange student from last school year. At this time, and about to be Bunkyo exchange student, she was here fall semester. Okinawan and a Chinese Johnny. <laughs> this is in Japan, by the way. A Chinese Johnny with them on a boat in Tokyo Bay. <laughs> and this, you know, this is not a, I didn't have to hunt all over for this kind of photograph. There are all kinds of them because these friends, or friends to be, are showing up on each other's campuses all the time. All the time. And again, this is an example. It's not it's not an American Benny and Johnny with some Japanese BGU students, but Chinese Johnnies. Now this is here, Festival of Cultures. And I, I guess I should have put this later, but again we've got BGU students and Okinawan students. Uh, performing at the Festival of Cultures, a classic Okinawan drum dance uh, performance. Uh, this is made, we started a May term eventually, as I said, to kind of match up with BSIS. And this was a May term group from May term, May 2013. This is in the lounge of the International Student Residence Hall at Bungkyo. And again, it's, you know, there's obviously Bunkyo students. There's always, always Bunkyo students in the dorm. You can't get a, you can't get a photograph of the Johnnies and Bennies without, and I'm not saying this negative, this is fantastic, without Bunkyo students being in it. But there's also Okinawans here. I, I don't know exactly what the, they keep kind of showing up over the various <laughs> uh, And I wanted to point out here, this fellow's name is Jack, and Jack did the May term at Bokyo in 2013. He went back this past January to teach at Bokyo High School in the first stage of another new relationship we have with Bunkyo that will allow our education majors to do a short-term kind of practice teaching at Bunkyo High School. And we know that it's sometimes difficult, right, for education majors to get that international piece in, but they can do it this way. So that's, that's new and we hope. There was another fellow with him, but he first went to Bunkyo as a mid-term student then went back to do this <coughs> teaching internship or whatever. And next year will be a JET teacher in Japan. Assistant language teacher on the JET program in Japan. The kind of steps that oftentimes we'll see with this. Um, students helping each other in the dorm. A lot of times, I said, book. Book of students are almost always in dorms, and they're just there to have some fun and chat, and eat their food or our food, one or the other. Uh, but they help each other with their studies, especially language studies. Right? And you can imagine how helpful that is to have Bunkyo students there, sort of tutoring our students in Japanese, while our students can tutor and help Bunkyo students with their with their English just by talking to you. So this kind of 
studying together, helping each other goes on all the time in the program. This is in the reef, so I'm shifting a little bit very quickly now to all that other stuff was integration and connectedness on the Bunkyo campus, right? Shifting a little bit to here, because this is an exchange. This is in the reef. Bunkyo exchange student, Bunkyo exchange student, at this time Bunkyo VSIS student. Russian, right? Yes. Uh, international student at St. Ben's from Russia, who became very, very good friends with those exchange students at the time. And then I want to point out this guy, his name is Nick. And every time there were Bunkyo students here, I'd be in the reef or elsewhere, and I would see him with the Bunkyo students. And he didn't study in Japan, he was not involved, he was not a summer counselor, none of this stuff. But he was always, well not always, but frequently with the Japanese students. Nick. Nick, Andy, Summers, uh, Chip, well, Terry, whatever. what's his real name, Terry, right? Anyway, Johnny's and Benny's who weren't through any of our programs connected to Japan or Bunkyo, but because those students were here and because they took the initiative, got really every year engaged with those Bunkyo students. There's Nick. <laughs> uh, not at the reef anymore, uh, but participating in the Nesbitt Festival, a neighboring community, a neighboring community, yeah, Bunkyo. And he's there because he applied for one of those two positions that I mentioned Bunkyo University offers to our graduates, was accepted, and at this point, he's one of the tutors, RAs, <coughs> language helpers at Bunkyo University. Never been to Japan before. Just came out of his contact with and engagement with the Bunkyo students <coughs> here. And his He's the other, the, the Garfunkel guy. <laughs> He's the other, was the other this past year, TA, tutor at Bunky along with Nick. Likewise, his path was just to engage and befriend. And they were great, right? Oh, yeah. they, were, they were great at their, their job. Some formal dinner at St. John's. Uh, Again, now we're looking at sort of integration of those Bunkyo students. We saw a little bit of that with Johnny's and Benny's when they're here. Um, exchange students. And of course, two Okinawans. <laughs> this gentleman is presently teaching in Okinawa. His contact with all of this began when, in his sophomore year here, he and his family did a homestay. And after that, he was sort of ever-present in most of what went on in this regard. And he now teaches at our partner school in Okinawa. This is a while back, but eventually these two folks ended up going to Japan on our program last semester when I, when I directed it. And these are the exchange students, again, who were here. Every year, my wife and I would have a, didn't do it last fall because we weren't here, but we would have a curry rice dinner at our home, and the purpose of it was, well, it was fun, but I mean, we invited the students who would be going to Bunkyo the coming year, and got them together with Bunkyo exchange students and sometimes BSIS students who were here, right, so that they could get to know each other. And what events like this mean is that 
It's rare indeed that a St. John student or St. Ben student goes to Bunkyo when they don't already know people there because they met them occasions like this. Right? These were BSIS students. She then did study abroad with me in the fall, already knowing and having a relationship with Bunkyo students, most of whom, by the way, were at the airport to, to greet us when we got there. Graduation, St. Ben's graduation. Again, he's teaching in Okinawa now. He did a May term at Bunkyo, did a full semester at Bunkyo. He's presently teaching at Orden Bunka Language Center in Japan. She did a May term, a full semester, very engaged with Asian activities on campus. Her name is Rachel. She's now teaching at Orden Bunka Center, and next year she'll be working at Bunkyo as a TA and RA in the dorm. Bunkyo exchange students, past study abroad, and a Benny from Vietnam, one of our very best ever Vietnamese students, uh, who studied abroad at Bunkyo. So that's pretty international. <laughs> that's pretty cool. This is pretty <laughs> intercultural. Uh, Hmong New Year's celebration, November of 2012, and so you can see all those, as always, active, engaged Hmong students, right? Well, she's not Hmong. <laughs> she's a Japanese exchange student. So is she. So is, is there another one? So is she. Japanese exchange students who took part in the, the Hmong New Year's celebration. And also in this picture, the, in the middle of the back row, are two students who studied abroad at Bunkyo with me last semester, but who had already obviously become engaged in new Bunkyo students. Okay, um, and I, I'm about, I'd be happy to know what time is it? I'm about done here, I'm sorry. Um, I want to very quickly, because this is really typical, a, a, another form of, I don't know, connectedness, I guess. Uh, at, young lady's name, and Benny's name is Abby Schmidt. She doesn't look like a Schmidt, but she is a Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> this is Abby. And Abby began, in 2012, Abby worked for me in the summer program as a counselor. And then in fall of 2012, she studied abroad at Bunkyo came back, did a BSIS homestay that year, and then worked for me a second year as a counselor in 2013. By the way, he's teaching at Oki Show right now. He studied abroad with me in the fall of this year, and he will be going to Okinawa this coming fall. Uh, Abby doing a homestay thing. That sort of pattern, right? I mean. She started just doing a homestay for a BSIS student and then got really engaged, right? I don't know what's next for Abby Schmidt, but I know she is forever a global citizen. There's just no, no way that's not going to be the case. Right? Oh, there are some other examples here. Tom Kane studied abroad at Bunkyo Fall 2003, then worked at Oki Show, went back to Bunkyo, got his master's degree at Sophia University, married a Bunkyo exchange student. He's still there, he ain't coming home. He's, he's global in the truest sense of the word. Aaron Toussaint, a similar history, including the master's degree from Sophia University. Tommy Anderson studied at Bunkyo Fall 2010. Went back, taught in Okinawa, worked at Bunkyo, got his master's degree from Sophia University. He is now married to an Okinawan graduate of St. Ben's. And there's all kinds of things. Uh, this is Jackie Naomi Lynch, Mikata Lynch, and her husband Brian Lynch, a Benny graduate, St. John's graduate, and their two children. They live in Tokyo. 
And every time our students are there, we see them. I mean, I see them all the time. They're just forever Bennies and Johnnies, except they're part of this community, right? This global community. Her mother, Michi Nakata, Jackie's mother, and if you, if you don't believe me, you can ask these people here. She came to the dorm on the Thursdays, I think like every Thursday, loaded down, and I mean loaded down with food for the students. So we started calling her the food lady. Uh, and I don't mean food for a little snack in the dorm. I mean like two, three days worth sometimes of food that she brought to the dorm every week and with Jackie with her sometimes. We offered her money. We offered her, no, 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 no. This is what I do, she said, as someone who is so tied to St. John's and St. Ben's. Her name is Nami. And I have Nami up to the talk a little bit. Her, Nakata's are an example of longevity, right? I mean, she graduated from St. Ben's in 2000. Her sister graduated a couple of years later. It's still so much part of our relationship. Her name is Nami, and I put her up here because in 2003, the first year that I graduated the program, she and her family did a homestay for us. She did a homestay for us last fall. 2000, 10 years later, she's still doing homestays for our students. She was also an exchange student here for a semester. She did a homestay this fall for us a week, and I know what this means, I've been through it, a week before she got married. And I said, Mom, you sure you want to do a homestay a week? Yes, I have to do a homestay, even, even though my wedding is in the week, right? Uh, this is the entryway during our Thanksgiving party at the dorm. Again, I, just to show you that, how much goes on between our students and the Tokyo students there. This is at the Thanksgiving dinner, and he ultimately would be an exchange student, so would she, one of the Malaysians who lived in the dorm with us at our Thanksgiving dinner. I should do it. I, but I, make the point at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, it's, I think it's marvelous. I should add, too, that all of this has going, been going on for a long, long time. But social media, whatever you think about it, social media has really upped the activity, I think, because, you know, I can go on Facebook any day of the week, any time, and unavoidably there are two, three, four exchanges between Japanese students at Bunkyo, Japanese alums of this program, people here, likewise, and not just chat, but you know, conversations and offers for help. And, you know, can I come and visit? Can I come and visit? Social media has really greased the wheels on, on this sort of thing. OK, I know I've carried on too much here, but um, What's, what's my ultimate point? I, what was my thesis? <laughs> um, that if, if we are really in the business of at least beginning the process of molding, creating real global citizens, there needs to be connectedness. There needs to be a, ideally, I think, a longevity to it. A lot of frogs have to be willing to jump into the water on both sides. We have to try at least to think of these things as organic, not static operations. Right? And I think the, the payoff, the payoff is money. 